What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Yes, my glasses have a huge crack in them. I left my everyday glasses in Arizona with Ben, but he'd ship them back. He just shipped them back to me. But today we're doing something pretty cool, uh, something I've never done, and something we've never done on this channel. I'm headed over to my buddy Matt's house. Uh, he does a lot of my taxidermy work. And uh, we're going to do my mule deer today. So I'm going to film the process of uh, how he mounts a mule deer. And I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm super interested in how this all goes down. So uh, I just pulled up. Let's get in here. See what it looks like. Annie said my whitetail is done from last year. So let's go check it out. My white tail looks awesome. It's almost done. It's just finishing drying and needs to clean the eyes and uh, do a few little touch up things. But this thing's gonna be awesome. It's gonna go on a, um, so this is the one that I shot at the Texana Brands Olive Ranch. And we're gonna get an olive tree for it to sit on. So there's a post that's gonna come out from the bottom and it'll be a pedestal on an olive tree. That'd be pretty sweet. So this is the blank mule deer form that we're going to be using. He already cut, changed the, the way the neck's going to be positioned. It was looking this way way too much, so he already cut that up. And then you already put the eyes in? Put the eyes in a couple days ago. I've drilled out the tear duct, drilled out the nostrils, and I've drilled out inside the mouth where the lips will go up in. Huh. So, so they don't come like that? No, they That's come. It'll, it'll come molded, but it's not cut out. So, and then of course, this is a wall pedestal. So, it'll be pulled around and stapled on the back. This edge will be glued and it'll be trimmed right along that edge. Awesome. And I'll put little staples in there until it dries. All right, we've got the hide. We've already got it tanned. It's been acid tanned, soft tan or wet tan, so it'll dry hard. Now, we're going to position the ear, shape the ear. The ear, when you skin it out, we skin it out backwards, we've got all the meat and everything out of it, just like taking a sock off. But we've got to make this ear hard again, otherwise it will not dry. So we're going to use Auto Bondo, just what repairmen use in the auto shop. We're going to mix it up and start putting in the ears. I thought they were... Liners? Yeah, I thought you put like plastic ears uh, in Some there. people use ear plastic liners. The problem with the plastic liner is every ear is shaped different yep all the ear liners are made exactly the same so it's it's real hard to get that liner to fit exactly perfect in there you got to pull and trim pull it out and trim this bondo you smooth it all out in the corners everywhere and it automatically fits so that cartilage that is in there it, it's tanned as well yes all that? yes yes all tanned. that's crazy there is a process where you can take some of this cartilage out i've never tried it it looks very very hard to do so i've never done that method before so this is the way I've been doing it for 25 plus years. Worked great. So what'd you add to that? Okay, so this is a hardener. The gray is the Bondo, the red is the hardener. Normally, I would, if I'm doing just a, a whitetail ear, I'll do both ears at once. If you're just starting this, I would not recommend that. I would do one ear at a time, and I would pre-mix some of this Bondo in just a you know, on a plate and pl kind of play with it to see how much hardener you need to add. Because the first time I ever used this Bondo, I put way too much hardener in it and it actually stiffened up while I was mixing it. Really? Yeah. So how long will it take for this to get hard? Uh, This, I'm gonna guess 10 to 15 minutes. Probably. Oh, so you do it quick. Yeah, it's pretty quick. All right. Stuff. All right. These are ear skinners, these two right here. Taxidermy Supply sells them. You got to have these to do taxidermy. Let's get in here and get our ear opened up. All right. Got our ear open. This is where the practice, you got to get a lot of practice to get this right here. Try to not get Bondo all over everything. And these mule deers are so big, we may end up having to do one at a time, but I bet we can get two done. So you gotta stuff them full, huh? Mm-hmm. Once you get good at a whitetail, 
If you don't have holes in the hide and everything goes perfect, you can do a white tail just to mount. Anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. Really? That's not tanning or any fleshing, that's just a mount. Uh, of course, you know, if it's got holes in the ears or if it's got holes in the hide or doesn't fit the form right, then you got a little more work into it. I was thinking you poured way too much, but now I see. Mm -hmm. Now I see why you poured so much. Yep. That's crazy. All right, a little bit more. Yeah, it just takes experience to kind of know how much you need. So what do you do if it dries on you too quick? Is there you a way just, to get it out? Yeah, you can just reverse it out. You can just reverse it. It's all in the end here. Oh, geez. We're going to just start smearing it all around in there really good. Sometimes you've got little holes where some will pop out. I tried to, I had one little hole in each year. I fixed that before I got started. But if it pops out, a lot of times you can just pinch it right to the edge mm -hmm. and let it dry. And right before it gets fully hardened, you can just pull it right out of the hair there. And so we're going to start forming our ear. All right, now let's jump to the other one before it starts to get hard on us. Twist. Here's big boy if y'all haven't seen him in a while. I can't even get him in frame. That's what he'll look like. Giant. So now he's just cutting the excess Bondo that spewed out. That dried really quick. Mm-hmm. There. Yep. That's crazy. So ears are done. It's going on the form now? Yeah, we're gonna put it on the form. Awesome. And make sure I don't have everything on here I need. We got a couple T pins because this one is split all the way down the back. So I'm gonna use those pins to hold the hide in place. Hold the hide in place while we uh, kind of get a little bit of a stretch on did it. Did you split it all the way down the back or did I? It, it was already split when I got it. Really? Mm-hmm. I guess that's how I caked it out on, yeah. in the field. Yeah, sometimes in the field you don't have a lot of room to work. So yeah. to, hang on a second. You know what? On this one, okay, normally if they're not split all the way down the back, I slide the hide over the head and then put the horns on. Mm -hmm. But since this one's split all the way down the back, we're going to put the horns on first. Okay. So, let's see. Big all right. What are you mixing up there? Bondo. I'm not sorry. This is uh, Plaster Paris. All right. So here's the trick. Put this lid on here. All right. The microwave. Throw it in the microwave. About 35 seconds. Well, plug this back in. Let it get warm. So do you screw the horns in as well as that Bondo stuff? Yes, yep. All right, next thing we're doing is we're gonna level our form. I always level it with the eyes, bottom of the eyes. Get my level. All right, we need to bump it a little bit this way. You just gotta be pretty close. You're not gonna be perfect. But. Yeah. It's pretty perfect. Yeah, pretty close. Believe it or not, your horns don't grow perfect at all. <laughs> Every deer, if you look at them, the beams will curve down, one will curve up. Something will be different on every one. Okay. Eyes are level. It'll still take this a little bit of time to harden, but that just helps speed it up. All right, I'm gonna let that set for a minute. All right, we'll put that on there. It's just starting to set up. <clears throat> we'll let it get a little harder before we put the horns on there. Okay. Okay. We're just starting to get set up. So. Dang, that does set quick. We'll get these on there. Then we're gonna get, get one started. OK, 
Okay. We want to check to make sure they're set even with the eyes too. We don't want to uh, work straight across. Okay, let's check our angles. All right, we need to run back with them a little bit. I see you just suck it down one mm -hmm. side or the other yep. to get it the way you want. And actually the true horn's in a straight angle with the head, but they look better on the mount if they're tilted forward just a little bit. All right, so now we're gonna sit in front of them and see how we go left to right. Okay, I can already tell this side's gotta go down. Okay, let's see. Ooh, that's pretty close. Mm, he's huge. Way. Let me look across this way. You know, don't. All right, let me. As this thing's getting hard on you, you got to work on it pretty quick. He looks pretty even right there. Okay, let's let it harden up, and then we'll tighten them down. play right here on the base mm -hmm. what does that do it does two things it, it when you're hide after you mount it you're going to push up on your clay it kind of sucks that hide next to the burr of the horn <clears throat> but whenever you flesh your hide your hide tends to be pretty thick around that base that burr area and when you flesh it you take a lot of that thickness off so that replaces some of that that muscle tissue and thick part there. If you don't put this in here when your hide dries, it'll suck down and pull away from the burr of your horn. An axis deer that has a straight, you know, shaft, yeah. straight shank, um, you'll just glue that one on there. You'll pull it up and glue that in place. Um, so pins kind of hold it in place. You may need some weight back here. Yeah, may need a little bit to hold it. I'll slide it back in better in a minute. We get a little more pin. Okay, that'll hold it in place when we get started. Now we're gonna start sewing. So do you sew around the horns first? Yes, yep. You'll sew one side of your V with one one little piece of string and then the other side you'll sew it with the, the second piece of string and it'll go all the way down your back. You just using fishing wire? Or? No, this is a waxed thread you buy from the taxidermy supply house. They make different sizes. I don't even, can't even tell you what size this is. I just know it works pretty good. It's about a medium size. I'll keep getting that out there next day or so to finish it all out. It sucks right up on there. Mm -hmm. We'll use a screwdriver in just a minute to push it up under the burr. How often does that hide rip? Uh, once you get used to doing it, not very much because if you, the only way it's gonna rip is if you take too small of a bite into your hide. If you take a pretty good bite into your hide, it won't hardly rip, but if you take a small little bite to the edge of it, it'll rip. Okay, let's see how it's gonna pull up here. Kinda good over there. Take this out. You definitely gotta be an artist to do this. And keep a uh, box of Band-Aids handy. Yeah, how often you poke yourself. <laughs> About once a month, you'll run that needle in your hand pretty good. Ugh. You don't I mean, think, don't worry about it, you just keep on, keep on rolling. Just to make something like this, 
floppy ears go to something like that it's pretty cool how do you get them ears to really pop out oh you put uh, clay under them okay because this was all all that area behind the ear was full of muscle tendon and a lot more cartilage that you cut off so so that's how you place your ears just mold yeah, it with I put the more uh, you put clay back in there to replace all that and then push the clay in position <laughs> the cartilage and meat out of the back of the ear to make it stand up. Get a roll of clay. We're just going to start stuffing it in place. Stuff it up in there. A little more room here to work with. kicked our ear out yep so then we can we can form it however we need to so we can push it in pull it out we can you know turn it we can move that around once it once we get done mounting it hmm. so he's just working this these stitchings down you can see we put the clay in the ears he put the clay in the ears uh, so we can mold those whenever he's done but he's just gonna run that stitch all the way down to the back and then uh you do the face after that or the bottom or uh we'll get the back tacked on and glued around the uh pedestal part then we'll go to the face made it to the back of the form you do any special knots or you just kind nah, of just knot it? just kind of i don't know what you call it just be sure before you pull your knot tight that you pull your string tight to suck the cape together. That's the main thing. Like on this side right here, just be sure you pull that one tight to get your, let me get that needle out of there. Be sure you pull this side tight right there to suck it mm -hmm. down. Then kind of hold it in place. Suck it up. We want to find center, which is going to be right here is our center. Okay, that's our center. Kind of test fit it first before we put glue on it. Yeah, it's gonna. You pull. just use super glue, or no? It's a uh, hide glue from the taxidermy shop. Oh. Okay. Oh, so you put it on all. Mm hmm Anywhere the main places I glue is anywhere you want the hide to indent like a muscle tone creases creases and if you want the hide to slide over an area if say your hide is tight if you'll put it on the whole neck it'll tend to slide on it real easy they also make this glue infused with cedar Get and it smells smell. it smells good it's hmm. uh it actually it's, a, it's used for a mothing agent how long does that take to dry uh overnight you kind of want it right where your head meets your <clears throat> right where the head meets the neck, you want to get quite a bit in there because you want the, the neck to suck down in there good. Kind of roll it on there so it'll slide easily. Let's find our center again. Right here. See, it already slid better. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're good here. All right, we're gonna put a couple staples in it. And these staples come out? No, the ones in the wood on the back will stay. Gotcha. All right, there's where we stopped sewing, so. Okay, that'll pull. We're gonna worry about that in a minute, so. You just have to glue those legs? Yes, too. we're gonna glue that because that's part of the wall pedestal there. We're going to go ahead and trim that off just to get some weight right. off of our stand. Find my scalpel. Okay. 
how does this the way that you tan them how does it dry like if you were to just keep that piece just dry hard uh yeah it'll dry hard if you want to soften it just run it over a yeah. board or something let me get all this lined up first see what we can cut off of here we can get rid of some of this just easier to work with it yeah. get off when don't need all right okay now on this front you want to be sure that you look at it from the front you got your center here you want to be sure on your legs that you match your coloration mm -hmm. in other words you see where you get dark to dark dark and light mm -hmm. you want to be sure it hits the same on each side like here we're about three inches up we're about an inch and a half over here so we'll take a little more off that one or a little more here just so it's even looking on exotics you really got to worry about that because exotics have too. spots and markings and okay so how do you get the hide to stick to the actual form i'm going to put staples in it oh it will stay yep make sure we get all the air pockets out of it like we got an air pocket right here mm -hmm. push that all the way out to the back there's another one okay we're gonna feel right where the edge is. Start stapling. Run your staples with the hair, the direction of the hair. These will all come out. So that glue is the only thing that holds it. Mm-hmm. Huh. And there may be other guys that've got a way better way to do it than I do. I've been doing it for years, and this has worked great. Looking like a mount now. All right, we'll start on the head. I've test fit everything. Looks like everything's gonna fit okay. Get our nasal nostrils kind of in there. And that glue is the only thing holding it? Well, I'll flare it out with the... It, it, it will be, yes, yes. But I will flare it out with some uh, paper towels to hold it in place while it dries. I try to even everything up with the nose. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this deer, if you want it to really look the way it is in nature, look at this. This hairline over here, straight down, look at this hairline, yeah. grows over. So that's just a, that's a something with the deer, you know, but it's yeah. gonna make him look off a little bit, but. I can't tell. I think you only can tell because you do it every day. Do it so long. It's gonna bunch up here, so I'm gonna start back here right. and work it forward. See kind of tell where you'll take it up. Yeah, go back with it. Yeah, if I'd have started in the middle, we would end it up with a big snarl right in the middle of it. So that's how the glue gets on the eyeball. Get it on everything. And then you can wipe it off the outer part of the, the outer part of the eye. Just peel it off there. Like I said, I'm sure guys have been doing it 20 and 30 years. They do it totally different than I do, but this always works for me. That glue, once it dries, you can come in there and scrape it off too. And your eyes, you, sometimes you have a little area, like right back here, I'm already telling you, we're gonna have a tiny little area. We're gonna have a little spot that's not gonna close all the way up. Mm -hmm. But when the mount dries, We've got that epoxy filler that'll come in 
we'll put it right in that little bitty corner there and then we'll airbrush it i mean it's, it may it pulled up pretty good if you look it's hard to see through this glue if you see there's a white part of the eyeball mm -hmm. you want just a little bit of your white showing all That's right looks an art right there pretty good right there okay let's see Yeah, these little bitty edges here, this like this little tiny corner, we'll put that epoxy filler in there once we're once it dries. And then airbrush it and you won't even see that. And that is how you mount a mule deer. Clean the That is insane. Gotta let him dry. Clean the glue off his eyes once it dries. So you think about a week drying, maybe a little more since he has long hair? Yep, seven to ten days. And uh, y'all go check my Instagram out. He will be posted on my Instagram whenever I come and pick him up. Well, that is awesome. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Matt, huge thanks. Appreciate it. Looks awesome. Like I said, y'all can go check it out on my Instagram whenever he's done. But that, it's crazy how narrow he looks from the backside. And then you come around to the front and he's just like, Oof. But hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure y'all stay tuned. I'm headed to the coast. We're going to be doing a lot of fishing. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up, and remember, eat good.